this will happen again to our children if I don't speak up. This isn't just rumors of what's going on. I saw it with my own eyes. A former Tri-West High School employee is speaking up about alleged sexual misconduct within the Northwest Hendricks school system and what he says needs to be done to better protect students. David Pyatt spoke exclusively with Call 6 Investigates Kara Kenny and shared surveillance videos that prompted him to contact the authorities. Kara explains why this video is now coming to light. Tri-West teacher and coach Tyler Bruce is charged with child seduction and obstruction of justice in connection with an alleged inappropriate relationship with a then 16-year-old student. This is surveillance video we obtained from a Tri-West attendance secretary, David Pyatt, that he says shows Bruce and the student alone together. We are blurring the student's face because she's a minor, but her parents told us that is their daughter and they want us to show this footage. The attendance secretary says he shared this video with law enforcement before Bruce was charged. In charging documents filed against Bruce, prosecutors mentioned this video and what Pyatt saw. The district fired Pyatt Tuesday afternoon after we started promoting this story and exclusive video. The school saying Pyatt confiscated confidential student information. David Pyatt has worked in law enforcement for 17 years and up until Tuesday was the attendance secretary at Tri-West High School. When we sat down with him, he was still working there. He previously had access to the school surveillance video system to track students coming in and out of the building. I used my phone to record them. The alleged victim was 16 years old at the time and a teacher's aide to Bruce. On May 2nd, as Bruce enters his office, the 16-year-old is leaving as the cameras are rolling. She returns and the two are now alone in Bruce's office. The lights go off. That's when David Pyatt walks past the office with his daughter. He goes, hey, what's going on? And it was just kind of a nervous, like, uh, this looks weird. I wouldn't be caught dead in a dark office with a, a student, especially a female. That's Coach Bruce entering the office. A similar incident happened the next day. The student goes into his office. Yeah, see, there the lights go out. What did you think when you saw that? That was just... It was just dumbfounding. We don't know what happened in that room. The cameras don't show that. We do know Bruce is accused of touching the student on several occasions when they were alone together. Court documents outline one incident in May when she was in his office and Bruce slid his hand up her dress and later that night asked why she was wearing underwear and if she had not, he could have gone further. The May 3rd video appears to show the athletic director, Nate Bagley, peek his head into the room. And you'll see when he comes out, he's kind of smiling and laughing. And he goes back in, talks again. Hyatt says this is problematic because court documents show the school became aware of the allegations months prior and Begley knew Bruce was not to be alone with that female student. And the athletic director knows they've been warned that and he's sitting there talking. Pyatt says he didn't initially report what he saw because the staff already seemed to know. But two weeks later, that changed when he had a meeting with Dean of Students Stacy Bagley. She's married to athletic director Nate Bagley. Because she divulged some things in that conversation that, um, that gave me more concern. Pyatt then contacted the Department of Child Services. What did you tell DCS when you called them? I told them that I, be, I suspected that there was an inappropriate relationship between the victim and Tyler Bruce. I believed that the administration was not doing their due diligence in reporting it. Shortly after Pyatt's report, we know DCS and the Hendricks County Sheriff's Office launched investigations. DCS determinations are not public record. Prosecutors criminally charged Bruce in January with child seduction and obstruction of justice. He denies the allegations. Do you think that Tyler Bruce would have been investigated by law enforcement and by the Department of Child Services had you not made that report? Oh, not a chance. Former Tri-West principal Adam Benner was also charged with failing to make a report about the matter. Pyatt says Benner blew him off when confronted about Bruce. He told me, Dave, we've turned over every stone so you can know and rest assured that we found no wrongdoing. And I said, it's actually the opposite. I said, with everything I know that he isn't, it proves you're not doing everything you're supposed to do. 
When the allegations came to light last summer, the school board kept Bruce on paid administrative leave. This despite then-superintendent Mike Springer's recommendation to fire Bruce. Springer told us, I am grateful to Dave Pyatt for his commitment to exposing the truth surrounding this situation. Mr. Pyatt's reaction and response to what he saw and heard in May 2019 was the reaction and response that Tri-West administrators should have had, but did not have, and to my knowledge, still have not had. Springer also put Stacy and Nathan Bagley on leave back in July for how they handled the Bruce matter, but the board voted in September to let them return to their positions, despite Springer's recommendation to fire them. Springer resigned amidst conflict with the school board over the Bruce matter. The district now has an interim superintendent. Pyatt says he saved the surveillance video and shared it with law enforcement because he did not trust the district to preserve the footage. When we sat down with Pyatt, he agreed the school might terminate him for sharing the video with us. You know you could get fired for speaking out. If they fire me, they fire me. But it, our ki this will happen again to our children if I don't speak up. The public will know this isn't just rumors of what's going on. I saw it with my own eyes. In charging documents filed against Bruce in January, Hendricks County prosecutors mentioned David Pyatt and this surveillance video. The teen in this video has since left Tri-West. Her family says she was treated poorly when the allegations came to light. We talked to her mom, Stacy Lewis, back in August when they filed a tort claim alleging the school district failed to protect their daughter. The parents of this community, they should be gravely concerned about what's going on right now at the school and, and the changes that haven't been made to stop another Tyler Bruce. The Federal Office for Civil Rights is currently investigating the Northwest Hendricks School Corporation for how it handles sexual harassment allegations. Pyatt says the district also needs to do a full investigation into who knew about Bruce and the now 17-year-old student and didn't report it. What's your biggest fear? That this continues and gets worse and... My biggest fear, I have two daughters. In, one's in elementary and one's in primary school. And to me, if we don't change the culture, then it's just go it's gonna happen again. On February 28, Nate and Stacy Bagley were placed on paid administrative leave with the school district in light of a complaint filed by the Indiana Department of Education. IDOE is seeking to suspend their teaching licenses for failing to properly report sexual misconduct allegations involving Bruce. Former Tri-West principal Adam Benner resigned last year, and the state has filed a complaint against his teaching license as well. The Bagleys and Benner have not responded to our repeated requests for comment. Back to you. Kara, thank you. And we asked the school district back in mid-February to speak with us on camera, but they instead provided a statement, quote, We have not viewed the video in question, but believe this video is part of an ongoing criminal case and or contains information subject to student privacy laws. Northwest Hendricks School Corporation has been and will continue to cooperate fully with law enforcement and the Hendricks County prosecutor to assure justice is served in a court of law and not the court of public opinion. Opinion, end quote. And just hours ago, RTV6 received yet another statement from the school district saying airing the surveillance video exploits a young woman and we want to be clear, the student's family wanted us to show you the footage and we did blur her identity. Now you can read this whole statement right now on the IndyChannel.com and the RTV6 app and we also reached out to the Hendricks County prosecutor who legally cannot discuss evidence with us. And Tyler Bruce is now on unpaid suspension and the board is taking steps to fire him. He has denied the allegations and has not responded to our repeated requests for comment. If you have concerns involving your child in school and you are not getting any answers or help, let us know. Email us at workingforyou at rtv6.com. Internal. Internal emails are raising new concerns about how school leaders handled a student walkout at Tri-West High School. In March, dozens of students protested the Northwest Hendricks School District's firing of a school attendance secretary. But students and parents became suspicious when school leaders held a fire drill at the same time as the walkout. Call 6 Investigates' Kara Kenny filed a public records request for internal emails, and what she found is leaving students disappointed. On March 4th, we introduced you to former Tri-West High School attendance secretary David Pyatt. He reported teacher and coach Tyler Bruce for alleged sexual misconduct with a then student. The parents of this community, they should be 
gravely concerned about what's going on right now at the school and, and the changes that haven't been made to stop another Tyler Bruce. Bruce is now fired. He's criminally charged with child seduction. Pyatt was fired too. The school says in part because Pyatt showed us surveillance video of Bruce and the student, the district calling it confidential student information. But still, TriWest students felt the district punished Pyatt for speaking out. So they planned a walkout for 1025 a.m. on March 5th. Morgan Bell and Carissa Ecker are TriWest students and supported the protest. It started because we were so pretty irritated about what happened with David Pyatt. We walked out because of how the school board was handling things. <laughs> to their surprise, the district held a fire drill right before they planned to walk out. I said it's an emergency fire alarm and then made all the kids go back inside and then tried blocking all of the doors saying none of us were allowed outside. The superintendent emailed parents that afternoon saying this was a planned fire drill for the month as required by law and all protocols for a drill were followed. But internal emails shed more light on what really happened. The day before the planned walkout for Pyatt, TriWest Principal Kelly Simpson sent this email to the superintendent with the subject line, potential walkout. How about a fire drill at 959? If it is a nice day, going outside would be perfect. Then if Channel 6 shows up, they will see all of us in unison going outside for a fire drill. Just a thought. Kids talk and they've made comments loud enough for teachers to hear. Going to bring a grill, play cornhole, have a real party. Superintendent Scott Syverson responded, up to you if you have a planned fire drill tomorrow. Not sure what the weather is supposed to be tomorrow. I would have a place for them to walk to, have Chuck out there and let them quietly protest. They just need to know they are unexcused from class they miss. I cannot imagine it will be many. And another email sent to TriWest staff the morning of March 5th by the administrative secretary read, please do not announce to the students. We will be doing a fire drill at 1023-ish. What do you think when you hear the, those emails? It's really disappointing. The walkout for David Pyatt still happened at 1025, but students say it was disrupted by the fire drill. They definitely crossed the line there, I think. Carissa and Morgan say school leaders' emails just confirm what they already suspected. When the fire drill happened, as soon as we walked out, we realized, oh, this was obviously an attempt to stop the protest. Everyone knew it. You should be able to look up to your principal and superintendent as like good people, you know, and like as someone who does kind of look up to the figures of our school, it's just, it's like a really sad thing to hear that they would go as far as doing something like that. We asked the Department of Homeland Security who told us drills are required to prepare students and staff for the proper actions in the event of an emergency. The sole intent of this requirement is to ensure the safety of students and staff for potential events. A good reason, I guess, would be like to get kids prepared and make sure everyone's ready in case an actual fire breaks out, like so that everyone knows what to do. Do you think that was the goal? <laughs> no. <laughs> No, I don't for that one specifically. Call 6 Investigates asked to interview school district leaders, but instead we got this statement. The walkout was not disrupted in any fashion whatsoever, and clearly the superintendent stated, give them a place to quietly protest, which we did and they did. Right now we are focused on moving forward, dealing with the COVID pandemic, and taking care of our students, parents, and staff during this incredibly challenging time. Students like Carissa and Morgan say the school could have handled things better. And even though TriWest will likely face no formal penalty, students say school leaders damage their relationship with students. If our school is going to send the wrong message, then our students are going to send the right message. Kara Kenny, RTV6. And Principal Kelly Simpson is retiring from TriWest as of June 30th. Tyler Bruce denies the child seduction charges against him, and his trial is scheduled for July. You can watch our full story with David Pyatt about why he reported Bruce in this story on the RTV6 app and the IndyChannel.com. I think this is right. So all these people came here to talk to you. So you're going to force her to, to talk to you for you all. You're not going to answer any of these questions, sir. Down to Petrates over there, why don't you? 
tense moments at another Northwest Hendricks School Board meeting, and this time no one from the community was able to voice their concerns to the board. The school board announced tonight it is suspending public comments at its meetings until further notice. That did not sit well with the large crowd that attended tonight. The meeting was the first since RTV6's exclusive story revealed more about the sexual misconduct allegations against Tri-West teacher Tyler Bruce. Former school employee Dave Pyatt was fired from Tri-West after he gave Call 6 Investigate surveillance videos that led Pyatt to contact the authorities about the alleged relationship between Bruce and a female student. Bruce is now on unpaid suspension and is facing child seduction and obstruction of justice charges. He denies the allegations. RTV6's Cornelius Hawker was there at tonight's meeting as the school board again avoided answering questions about the situation. It's completely ridiculous. Um, That's how Cody Bruins and many other people feel about almost everything the Northwest Hendricks School Board has done since last summer. There's a petition to get him overthrown, and there's a lot of people that don't like him, and they do a lot of, a lot of corrupt things. I mean... At this meeting, the board announced they would no longer allow public comments, something they say they're allowed to do by law. One person in the audience stood up as they ended the meeting fairly quickly after that announcement. Don't, they will not answer that, folks. That breaks the law. His question went unanswered. Board President Jim D'Agostino wouldn't answer my question either. All these people came here to talk to you. He slipped out the back, avoiding the crowd. Donna Petrace explains why they've ended up public comments for now. Quite honestly, nobody seems to be having any trouble getting messages to the board in any other form or fashion. We had business to take care of tonight. We wanted to take care of the business and move forward. Donna even mentioned the recent COVID-19 outbreak as one of the reasons why public comments have been suspended. And really didn't want to keep people in close quarters any longer than necessary, you know, with Avon just canceling school with two COVID-19 cases. You know, we're very cognizant of that and trying to be sensitive. But many of these people, including Cody, aren't buying any of those reasons. At the end of the day, you know, the community standing up and doing what's right, whether the school board likes it or not. Working for you in Hendricks County, Cornelius Hawker, RTV6. RTV6 has been covering this story extensively since the beginning from last summer's announcement of the investigation to last week's student walkout in support of fired attendance secretary Dave Pyatt. Now you can find all the stories we've done in the RTV6 app, our YouTube channel, and our website at theindychannel.com. The Northwest Hendricks School Corporation has been under scrutiny for more than a year for how it handled sexual misconduct allegations involving a 16-year-old student and a teacher. The district's school board race is heating up uh, with two incumbents and three challengers vying for two open school board seats. One of the challengers is a whistleblower in that sexual misconduct case. WRTV Investigates' Kara Kenny joins us with why this race is so important for the community. Many people in the Northwest Hendricks School Corporation say the community is divided and broken, and that's why the two open seats here on the school board are more important than ever. Campaign signs for school board dot just about every corner of Northwest Hendricks County. Joe Brooks is taking on incumbent board member Craig Peoples. As far as healing the community, um, that is something that it has to happen. Abby Morgan. I'm running for school board because I love this community. And David Pyatt are challenging incumbent board president Jim D'Agostino. It's really simple to go in and, and, and be transparent. All those in favor say aye. The current school board has faced criticism for how it handled sexual misconduct allegations involving teacher Tyler Bruce and a then 16-year-old student. The board did not fire Bruce until two months after he was criminally charged with child seduction and seven months after the alleged victim's family filed a tort claim against the district. The district also paid two Tri-West High School administrators $111,000 while they were on administrative leave for nearly a year. Nathan and Stacy. Bagley are accused of failing to report the misconduct allegations to the authorities. It's frustrating uh, to see that spending. In my opinion, it's just plain frivolous. Um, but once again, I don't know why they made that decision. Um, and, and those are questions that, if I'm elected, I will, I will find out. It's sad to me that money was um, wasted, if you will, um, that in that way. 
Um, but again, I, I wasn't in the room, you know, when they got the information that they used to make those decisions. Um, but I do think that we need to be fiscally responsible. The starting salary for teachers in Northwest Hendricks is $44,000. We as a community could have better used that money to pay our teachers to if we needed to hire more teachers and just the cost to taxpayers. David Pyatt was an attendance secretary at TriWest High School and reported suspected sexual misconduct involving Bruce and a 16-year-old student to the Department of Child Services. He also shared with WRTV surveillance video showing the two together, a move he's been praised and criticized for and also in part led to his firing from the district. I'm the only one that had that video. Had I not recorded that video on my phone, there would be no video. The, the staff in that high school made no efforts to keep that evidence and secure it. Abby Morgan says she was not involved in the situation, unlike her opponents, Pyatt and D'Agostino. I'm the option um, for the taxpayers and the community members that are saddened by the state that we're in, um, are concerned for our school system, and want to move forward together. Um, and I'm running without bias, I'm running um, without malice. Many people in the community have expressed frustration that board members won't answer questions and recently eliminated public comment from public board meetings. When you, you know, cut off public comment um, is when that happens, that's when the distrust starts. It's very cold and it's a and it, it just is really continuing to divide the community. And I would really like to see the current board in their current condition they're in now make an attempt to 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 apologize to the community for the, the way that they've went about it. Both incumbents Craig Peoples and Jim D'Agostino have declined all of our interview requests, including for this story. And this is what happened when we tried to get answers from the board president last fall. Mr. D'Agostino, what's your uh, response to the request to resign? You can talk to our communications director. But you're an elected you. official. You can talk to our communications director. You're not going to answer any of our questions. You can talk to our communications director. Last fall, the district hired communications consultant Donna Petrates. She makes $750 a day plus mileage when she's doing work for the district. Instead of saying move forward, let's get in there and make sure we've gotten everything, do a full investigation, get all the information out, and get it done with so we can move forward. All three candidates plan to increase communication and transparency. They say the Northwest Hendricks community needs to heal. The question is when and how to do it. Working for you, Kara Kenny, WRTV. If you'd like to hear more from the candidates, check out our hour-long candidate forum in this story on the WRTV app and at WRTV.com. Tyler Bruce and the Bagleys have denied the allegations against them. The Bagleys were fired from the district this month and are expected in court next month. Bruce also has a court hearing next month. Voters have ousted two incumbent school board members in the Northwest Hendricks School Corporation. This decision follows a more than a year of controversy and divide over how the school district handled sexual misconduct allegations involving a teacher and a student. WRTV investigates Kara Kenny has been tracking this case from the beginning and now has the latest. Earlier this fall, WRTV hosted a Facebook Live candidate forum with the three challengers, Joe Brooks, Abby Morgan, and David Pyatt. The two incumbents did not agree to participate in our Facebook Live. Tonight, we've learned that Morgan and Brooks have won and have defeated those two incumbents. Northwest Hendricks School Board President Jim D'Agostino and board member Craig Peoples are out. Voters have decided to replace them with Abby Morgan and Joe Brooks. Morgan received 51% of the vote, while former Tri-West Attendance Secretary David Pyatt received 30%, and Diagostino just over 17%. Challenger Joe Brooks received 67% of the votes and overwhelmingly beat incumbent Craig Peoples. I think what we heard yesterday was the silent majority spoke. So I, I really think that's what happened. Uh, um, the, this is this is what happens when the trust gets removed. All those in favor say aye. 
The current school board has faced criticism for how it handled sexual misconduct allegations involving teacher Tyler Bruce and a then 16-year-old student. The board did not fire Bruce until two months after he was criminally charged with child seduction and seven months after the alleged victim's family filed a tort claim against the district. The district also paid two Tri-West High School administrators $111,000 while they were out on administrative leave for nearly a year. Nathan and Stacy Bagley are accused of failing to report the misconduct allegations to the authorities. That says that the community was done with what happened, that everything was exposed, and they, they were fed up and said, you know, we're going a completely different direction. David Pyatt was an attendance secretary at Tri-West High School and reported suspected sexual misconduct involving Bruce to the Department of Child Services. I would suggest that her and Joe do a top to bottom review of this incident on everything and get everything out that they can to the public. Both Brooks and Morgan have vowed to look into what happened and share what they can with the public. They'll work with the three other board members who were not up for re-election this year. We're all still neighbors. We all still go to the same events and church and, you know, we're going to see each other at, at restaurants and grocery stores and all those things. And we, we uh, we're all part of the solution one way or another. I know that I'm going to make sure personally uh, to do everything that I can do to communicate and keep and maintain the trust that the community obviously has with me uh, in regards to the way that the turnout was yesterday. Many people in the community have expressed frustration that board members won't answer questions and recently eliminated public comment from public board meetings, something both Brooks and Morgan want to change. When you, you know, cut off public comment um, is when that happens, that's when the distrust starts. Pyatt says the community now needs to get behind the new board members so this corner of Hendricks County can begin to heal. I support both of them um, in moving forward, and I want all my followers to support her in moving forward with this. Working for you, Kara Kenny, WRTV. Abby Morgan told us, quote, I would like to thank the members of the Northwest Hendricks School Corporation community for their support. I'm excited about this opportunity to serve the community I love. Jim DiAgostino and Craig Peoples haven't responded to WRTV's requests for comment.